we'll be talking. Hey there, great to see Hi. you. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah, same here. Um, um, so you've got have you you've got a slide deck? I do. Um, I can probably. I love share the I love the title of your um, presentation: artificial intelligence, more like artificial stupidity. Uh, yeah, that is. I mean, it is uh, obviously a little bit clickbaity, um, <laughs> but it also uh, it also there's there's a little bit more behind it actually, uh, and I hope I I get to. Um, uh, talk a little bit more about that um, after I have after I figured out how to share my screen. Okay, you f you figure that out. I'll um uh, entertain our audiences in the meantime. The thing I love about uh, artificial intelligence is when it started, you know, like it was things like messenger bots being able to um, tell you recognize that you want a pizza and that they would then let you know where the pizza places were. But really, what was happening was it was triggering the word pizza, and then someone in a cubicle was seeing that and then running over okay. checking the yellow pages for the pizza places yeah. and then going back and typing it in <laughs> so we've come a bit further down the track with ai from there uh, maybe maybe not let's see. <laughs> let's see okay i'll hand it over ciao awesome thanks um right um i guess what i what i want to do today is just um tell you a couple of stories about about data and about AI and about machine learning. And, and some of these stories are uh, success stories where we can really see a lot of value was, was created through um, AI, but some of them are not. And um, as I mentioned, the title is not just clickbait. Um, um, there are some, some pretty nice examples where AI has failed. And, and I try to dig a little bit deeper into those, um, particular those that failed, and then we can see why they failed um, and what we can do in the future um, to prevent them from failing again, right? And when I say I want to tell you a couple of stories, there's this, the, in my opinion, one of the greatest storytellers that we have is Douglas Adams, and, and um, you probably know him. He's quite famous, especially in the, in the tech community, and he brought us a couple of memes that uh, 42 is the answer to the question of life, the universe, and everything, and that we should not panic. But he also um, brought us one more thing that's not quite as, as popular, um, but it is it's also a fascinating idea, which is this babel fish. And um, so Douglas Adams describes this babel fish. It's like some fish somewhere in the universe, right? It's a tiny yellow fish. Um, and you can put that fish into your ear. And what it, it does, it, it picks up the brain waves of the people talking around you in, in any language, basically, and then translates it into a language that you understand, uh, which is obviously... Um, a crazy idea, right? Um, so, if that idea is so crazy, let me let me show you this thing. Um, I hope you can see that. Hello and herzlich willkommen to my Vortrag über künstliche Intelligenz. Right, and now I mentioned this crazy idea of this crazy fish that translates uh, basically into any language. And now we look at this example and we can see, okay, there's already, um, there's already some kind of AI, some kind of um, machine learning in that case that does this translation. If I were to click this, this, uh, this button now, it would actually read it out to you. Admittedly, um, it is not as cool as uh, the, the, the fish in your ear, um, but it still is, it still uh, is pretty close and it does this, um, it does this, this translation um, in real time based on what I say in one language into another language, which is already, which is already um, pretty cool and um, is a nice value that we, that we get from, uh, from machine learning. And on top of that, um, Google is also selling these, these tiny earbuds, um, which are tiny things you can put into your ear. And if someone speaks in a language and you click on a the button, they actually translate it into um, in the language that you understand in your ear directly. I mean, they are still, they are still. A, you still need a phone, and the phone is actually doing the translation and whatnot. But the the this absolutely fictitious, crazy idea that Douglas Adams and he had a couple of crazy ideas, but this absolutely unimaginable in real life, just just a, a few decades or even one decade ago, is now possible due to machine learning. And I think that's a that's a fantastic example where machine learning actually adds a lot of value, especially um, 
I'm living in a country where I did not grow up in, where I did not grow up speak the language. Uh, um, so that is for me particularly very helpful. Um, and I think for a lot of people, um, translation is, is, is a helpful um, tool. But there's an even, even better example where machine learning has actually brought a, a life-changing impact. And that is um, detection of, of cancer cells and based on, based on image data. And we can see here um, on the top there's, um, there are there's image data of, of human cells. And we, there's a, a machine learning model is trained to detect cancerous cells. And for a couple of years now, machine learning has been better, has, has a higher accuracy at predicting cancer cells than human doctors, trained professionals whose job it is to identify them. And um, it started a couple of years ago where, where machine learning models uh, beat humans in, in, in this particular category uh, for breast cancer. And I think last year Google released a, a machine learning model that is now better at um, detecting cancer cells on image data for lung cancer. And that really is a, that really is a, is a life-changing um, feature, a life-changing functionality that we get through the advancements of, of uh, machine learning. But coming back to the title of the talk, um, we all know that AI fails, right? And I've picked some simple examples here. If you, on the, uh, on the very right, you can see this um, this uh, screenshot from Twitter where someone is tweeting to this Indigo. Indigo is an Indian airline, and he's saying, "Hey, thank you for sending my baggage to Hyderabad while flying me to Kolkata." Obviously, a sarcastic tone, um, but I, I presume there's a chatbot, uh, and that chatbot didn't pick it up. the The reply is, "We're glad to hear that." So obviously, um, that bot did not get it. Either right? in the middle, there's something similar. Someone is telling PayPal, hey, I got scanned, which is like a serious thing um, and a bad thing, a negative thing. And, and the response from PayPal is, hey, great. And there's, a, there's another example. Um, and we all know these examples where, where, where AI fails. Um, my, my favorite one is, is this one, um, one of my favorite ones. And if you speak Mandarin, you'll be able to figure it out already. For everyone else, I give a little bit of a background. There are a couple of, of cities in China that have um, cameras on top of traffic lights, right? There's a, there's a zebra crossing, a pedestrian crossing, and there are traffic lights. And if it's green, you can go. If it's red, you can't. And they have cameras, and these cameras film the street. And if someone is crossing while there's a red light, they do this, and this is what we can see here. They have a big screen, like huge, like a um, building wall kind of huge, and they they shame that person. They take a picture, uh, take a recording of that person. Hey, that person just crossed the street while it was red. Um, but if you look closely at this photo of this screen, you can see there's actually no person crossing the street, right? It's a, it's a bus driving by because the bus has a green light. Huh? The pedestrian does not. The bus has a green light, and the bus has a face or has a, has a person printed on the side, which is driving by. The camera picks that up and says, okay, we found a person. Ha, ah, look here. Um, we show everyone that, that you just jaywalked. And it's even, it's even better. It's not just um, identifying that there is a person. It's not just object um, recognition. It actually is using face recognition and is finding out who that person is. In this case, it's the CEO of this company and they were advertising on the bus with her, with her face. And she was in a different city at this time when this happened. And she got a message on her phone saying, hey, we just saw you jaywalking. And she was obviously she didn't know what they were talking about because she was even in a very different city. Um, and there's um, I think that's a that's an example where uh, okay, AI can fail and, and can have negative, um, a, a quite negative impact. Um, and it, it goes even further because some um, some cities uh, don't just stop at um, hey, we're, we're shaming you and we're sending you a message, they deduct the fine for jaywalking from your WeChat Pay account within seconds. Your, your face um, is linked to, uh, I mean, it's your identity is, is known. Um, your bank account is linked to your identity. Your WeChat Pay account is linked to your bank account. And that's how, that's how you can get immediately fined if you jaywalk in, in some of these Chinese cities. And as we can see here, Sometimes that's just not not an accurate um, 
interpretation of what happened. Right. And now the question is, why does this, why does this go wrong so much? Um, and the reason is one of the reasons I have, I talk about two particular issues um, in, in, in this talk. Um, one of them is something that I, uh, I said, the black box behavior of machine learning models. I have a very simple example here um, where uh, a very simple uh, deep neural network and the production ones are uh, significantly larger. I mean, you can see as the question is like eight nodes on the input layer and then like three hidden layers. Production systems can have hundreds, thousands of nodes per layer and 50 or, or more than 100 layers even. Um, but you can already see in this very simplified example, there are so many connections between all these nodes. For a human, it is simply impossible to comprehend what particular input now um, created created a particular output because there's so much so much data flowing so much um, activation um, between these layers and between these nodes that is already in this very simplified example impossible to understand and that is one of the that is one of the issues this, this black box behavior that we don't understand of machine learning models that then in certain circumstances will just fail and we had no idea of knowing about it because we simply couldn't comprehend um, previously what was what was going on. So that is one of the issues: is the the um, black box behavior, the not understandability of of machine learning models. But there is another issue, and um, I, I'll talk about um, this example. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty good one to showcase this. Um, street bump. Street bump was uh, the solution to a problem that the city of Boston had in 2011. They had potholes and they wanted to, to fix that. And it was 2011, they did what everyone was doing. They built an app. And this app was, was the street bump app and it worked in a admittedly pretty fascinating and clever way. Um, this app, um, when you were driving around in your, in your car in the city of Boston, you would start this app, put the phone on your passenger seat and whenever you would hit a hit a pothole and there would be this vibration, the app would detect, okay, there was a pothole, would then take the GPS coordinates and send this information to the service. Hey, uh, I found a pothole at this location. I admit it, I, I, arguably, I mean, that's pretty smart. Um, and after some time, the app worked uh, quite well. After some time, people looked at the data and they noticed that the potholes are only in the high cost of living areas of the city. How does that make sense, right? If anything, you would, I mean, you would expect like a more or less evenly distributed um, amount of, of, of potholes uh, across the city, but that wasn't the case. And, and uh, the issue was that 2011, it's not like nowadays where everyone has a, has a smartphone, right? Um, 2011 was a little bit of a different time. Um, smartphones, and particularly smartphones that could install apps um, were quite rare and they were quite expensive. They were quite quite new, um, and that meant that only people who could uh, the only people who could actually afford um, these smartphones were the ones living in the high cost of living areas and uh, were the rich people. And that's what led to to only having data from these particular uh, areas. So the 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 issue here was, and there to there was this thing to note. There was no machine learning. There was no AI um, involved. It was simply that the data was was true. The data was wrong. The data was biased, and that caused this this um, this uh, app basically to to be misrepresenting of, of the reality. They fixed it um, evenly, um, equally clever, if you ask me. They fixed it by installing the app on phones and putting it in public buses. So the buses would drive around the whole city um, and garbage trucks, and and they would then um, give a more, uh, a more realistic view of the potholes in the city. Um, so I think that's a, that's a pretty, um, pretty good example of why, how the data um, can already mess up um, it quite a bit. And let me, let me show you uh, another example. Um, and maybe you remember that already, uh, actually. Uh, because it was quite popular some time ago, a couple of years ago. Um, 
So I'm, I'm translating these two sentences from English into Malay. And why I'm, why I'm selecting Malay is because Malay does not have a gender specific pronouns. You can see here, I'm, I'm saying he and she, but in Malay, I'm not going to pronounce it. <laughs> I'm not going to make a fool out of myself. Uh, it, there's no, it doesn't look like there's a he and she. There's no, there's no gender I specified, right? The thing to notice here is, and I'm going to reverse translate it in a second. But before that, we should note that there is uh, this doctor is a female. I specified she is a doctor. And this nurse here is male. I specified that he is a nurse. Um, and it translates into this language where this, this gender basically gets lost. And if we now translate it back, let's see what happens here. All of a sudden, the doctor became male and the nurse became female, even though I explicitly said the exact opposite. And the reason why that happened is, and I, I, I called out this translation as a, as a good example how, how useful a machine learning model is. The thing what happened here is that these translation models, these translation systems basically work on the principle of, um, I let you, I throw, I train this model with a lot of text in multiple languages. Um, I show you the same text in English and in Malay, and, uh, and you study how to translate it from that in the other language, and with a lot of text. And historically speaking, most of the text was simply saying he when it was about a doctor and she when it was about a nurse. Even though there was no um, gender specified in the Malay text, the English text often or most of the time had he and she. Nowadays, we know everyone can be a doctor, everyone can be a nurse. But historically speaking, that was simply not the case. And that is, um, that is something that where, again, the data that was used to train these models has actually impacted this, this behavior. Um, for for this the same case was popular for Turkish um, and then Google had to implement like this workaround where they explicitly call it out but that's a that's a manual extra effort that you usually don't want let me give you another example there's the the um, compass system in the US which is used to um, basically um, we have an indication whether someone will uh, a criminal will, will re-offend will, will commit a crime again um, and it's giving you, um, you the, these criminals, when they are caught, they have to fill out this, this um, questionnaire, like 200 questions. And based on that, the system says, OK, it is likely that this person will reoffend after the person gets out of jail, or it is not very likely. And, and these decisions, and then the, the judge who sees this, can take this into account when, making, um, when setting the bail or even determining the, the, the prison sentence. And then this data was analyzed. And you can basically be wrong in two cases, right? You can say, hey, this person will not reoffend, and the person does reoffend, or you can say the person will likely reoffend, but the actually does not reoffend. And what happened here is that ProPublica analyzed this. And what they found is that in the first case, where people got labeled a higher risk, but they didn't actually reoffend, this was only applicable to 23.5% of the, of the white uh, offenders but almost 45% of the African-Americans. So African-Americans were almost twice as likely to be labeled a higher risk, but then, and the, the study was over two years, but then did not reoffend. And in the exact opposite case, people were labeled a lower risk, but then did reoffend. It's almost 50% of the white offenders were labeled lower and then did reoffend, and only 28 for the African-Americans. So clearly there's a racial bias in this system and the, um, this system never even asked for, um, for ethnical background or never asked for, for skin color. Um, it was based on, on other data that was then uh, gathered together and uh, basically pseudo identified um, African Americans and, and then uh, labeled them uh, based on this, this uh, racial bias. There's one, one more example um, that I that I found quite shocking um, because this one is already in uh, the previous one and this one are actually impacting people's life quite heavily um, in a very negative way. And there's a study about autonomous driving cars and uh, whether you want it or not, autonomous driving cars will probably take over our streets in the next decade or two, uh, maybe three, uh, let's see. Uh, and most of these uh, work in a, in a way that they have a lot of sensors, lots of cameras, some of them have only cameras and it's basically about um, seeing what is around to make the correct decision, right? And if there's a pedestrian in front of you, 
in front of the car, the car should break or like drive around and whatever, not hit the pedestrian. But then the study found out that um, these self-driving cars have difficulties identifying pedestrians when they are dark skinned. So in the end, when we have millions of cars that are driving autonomously on the streets, there's a very real chance that accidents will happen, just like now accidents happen. Um, and in, that, in these situations, it is a very real chance that it is more likely that dark-skinned pedestrians will get run over and potentially killed than, than white-skinned pedestrians. And that is because um, the, um, the data that was used to train these models have probably not been um, equally distributed across um, all, all the people that we have on this planet. Uh, and that will literally kill people if this gets into production. And now you're telling me, hey, um, Aiko, you say we have machine learning everywhere. Um, it's failing, it's badly. Are we all doomed? Is the world on fire? It is not. Um, we, there are a couple of things that we can do. Um, the first thing is about that we don't understand how how uh, machine learning models work. There are ways um, how we can do that, and we need to make that an important part in selecting a model. We need to move away from this, I throw data into machine learning, and I take the output, and we need to move into, I throw data into a machine learning model. I look at it, I try to understand it, and then uh, give more data, particular, um, that, that helps figure out the, the or fix the issues that we found, right? There's um, an example where for, for um, image recognition, we can we can already have easy ways to um, to actually figure out what is going on. One of my favorite ways to understand what is going on in machine learning model is Lime, and it it, it serves it works in a very um, simple but very powerful way. Uh, I give an example here. There's a tro a frog, and it got identified as a, as a tree frog. Um, so our model says it's a tree frog. And what Lime does is it takes um, again this input but removes certain parts of the data, throws it into the machine learning model, and see, sees, hey, does the model still predict this a tree frog? And as you can see here in the middle on the top, um, lots of things are grayed out, but they, they are still an 85% uh, um, uh, value that this is actually a tree frog. So that means the data that you removed is not relevant for this prediction. And in the middle, you can see lots of other data is removed, there's no way um, this is the tree frog anymore and the machine learning model does not know. That means the data, at least part of the data you removed was relevant for the identification of this tree frog. So that is something how you can find out how it actually, um, what is actually important in this um, identification of, um, of the outcome. I think we need more teams. Um, we, diversity in, in software development or in the whole IT industry is a big issue for quite a long time now. And now even more than before, uh, we need to have, let's say the, the car example, the autonomous driving cars. If you would have in uh, more dark skinned people in your development team, you would have probably tested for that, right? There are lots of reasons um, why you would want that. And this is just, that's one. Um, uh, there's a data ethics canvas, which I can recommend, uh, which basically guides you through the questions that you should have when, you, when you're starting a, a data center project. Uh, and there is one more which I find um, very useful is Google Facets, which basically is a visualization tool for your data sets. You, you throw it in um, relatively simple. You really just um, dump it there and it can visualize and you can easily see, ah, okay, look, um, I only have 20% female. Clearly, it's an underrepresented group. I need to fix my data set a little bit and a couple of other things that you can find out. That being said, um, I hope that uh, I could give you a couple of ideas of what I, what the two big issues that I see with the current approach of, of the widespread distribution of, of machine learning and AI. And, and I hope I could also give you some hope that there are ways to fix that and um, we should probably do that. And that being said, uh, thanks very much for your attention. That was fantastic. Thanks, Aiko. And so timely at the moment. I mean, we've just seen how Google isn't um, honoring its ethics yes, yeah. uh, uh, basis as far as how it's supporting the teams, you know, and I think the um, that paper that's just been um, shared around that really highlights a lot of the um, 
uh, discussion that you presented. The we are running close to time though, unfortunately. If there's so so you've got your um, Twitter handle up here now. That's the best way. That's also your medium blog post. It it is. I am rarely on Twitter, and I'm also I rarely post on Medium. But if well, I if I do anything, yeah. but you can if you want to reach out, you can just Google my name. It's relatively unique, and you will probably find <laughs> me somehow. Fantastic. So do that, and then or but maybe just check your Twitter just in the next couple of days. I don't want to get you back into the dumpster fire of Twitter and the their their problems with algorithms. But yeah. um, the. But it, I mean, certainly, also, I mean, uh, the, the the discussion around the um, use of um, how they position black faces in their, uh, you know, black people in their um, uh, profile feed, as far as like what part of like you know, there's people who where they're showing only this part of the body, you know, like the middle range of the body when it's a full photo, because the algorithm is deciding to move their face off the the central image you know it's crazy some of that right, stuff yeah. so so i can imagine why you're not on uh, how every time you go on twitter it will be like ah! but so um but maybe jump on in the next day or so just to see if people have followed up from sure. um from here great thanks very much i'll ask you to leave the stage